Rome Research, Rome Note, and Anki. These are three of the apps I've been using for note taking and flashcard management over the last year or more. And a question that comes up a lot in both my own mind and uh, some of you, the viewers, is which one should I stick to? Which one should I be using? Uh, today's video, I want to tell you what I think is the best one to use for studying. So at the end of May 2021, I booked onto a course to study for the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner, and it has an exam to be taken in the middle of June. And weirdly, what excited me most about taking this course and studying for an exam was, was actually more the fact that I could get to use Remno, Rome Research, and Anki, and put them to the test with a focus of studying for an exam because up until this point I've used these apps for note taking at work you know which has a very different frame of reference where you're thinking about connections between people between projects and pieces of knowledge at work whereas now I'm using it in a new context which is I need to learn this content memorize it to be able to pass an exam and so I was really interested to see which one stands out Okay, so for during the course that was preparing for the exam, it was a two-day event where we watched a series of videos on all the key topics and had discussions with um, other members of the study group and the course host. Now for this, I decided to use Rome Research, and that was purely because I was already quite familiar with Rome Note, having used it for the last year, whereas Rome Research, I had only been using that for the last few weeks. So I really wanted to put it through the test to easily compare to how it stacks up against Remnote and, and using Anki. So let's dive over into my notes and I'll show you kind of roughly how they look in my initial experience using Rome Research. So first thing you'll notice, I took all my notes in a single page. Some people may do it differently, like if you're following Zettelkast and you'll split up specific pieces of knowledge into their own page. I'm kind of taking a hybrid approach. The first thing that struck out to me about Rome Research is it's beautiful. There's almost no lag with loading pages and switching between them. And everything seems to just work seamlessly, which I was a big fan of. And uh, when you compare it to Remno, I've noticed you know small bugs and slow to load and stuff like that. So it was a really nice, um, nice to use. But the true power when I was taking notes in this course was the whole point of things like Remnote and Rome Research is the networked notes. It's the idea that all these notes are related. And so what I found, even early on, you'll see here, when I was studying about regions, availability zones, edge locations, and that specifically. So I learned what they are, places for caching content, doesn't matter. Then I went on and learned about a service that AWS have called CloudFront. And it goes on to say how actually it, it leverages edge locations. And so you can start to see how as you're learning about these things, they all interlink, they all build on each other. And so eventually my note for edge locations, if you come and view this, you can look at all your linked references and see, oh, okay, um, my edge locations are relevant in transfer acceleration. They're relevant in cloud front. Um, this is specifically what edge locations are. And I haven't had to go and specifically write those into relationships. I just type my notes. And as long as I'm putting backlinks in, um, this network and wider connected understanding is just going to happen naturally. So when you're reviewing it later, it is super powerful. Okay, so for after the course, the obvious thing to do to prepare for your exam is for revision, reviewing your notes, memorizing key content, understanding the concepts. Now this exam is a multiple choice exam and it was heavily geared towards learning a lot of basic definitions, uh, learning lists of like advantages, disadvantages, lists of key features. So there's a lot of information where it actually is very geared toward memorization. Um, and that's where flashcards come in handy. And so since I'd started taking notes with Rome, I decided to leverage Anki to create flashcards and memorize a lot of the information for the exam. So I'll walk you through roughly what I did here by loading up Anki. And you'll see I have a deck here 
AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. So I made a deck. What I'll just quickly show you is if you click on Browse, uh, select the AWS deck, and you'll see here that I've got one of 439 cards selected. So it took me a few hours to create these cards, which sounds like a lot, but I mean, even in creating the cards, you're reviewing the content, uh, thinking about the questions you might ask. And so it's revision in itself. So don't let that deter you, but I created 439 cards. And the key thing here about Anki is that you can create all different types of um, cards for different structures of information. I've touched upon it in my previous videos, but you can have standard basic front things, but you could also have here, for example, the six advantages of cloud computing. This is like, it's a core thing that they ask you and there's six answers. Now I've used an add on here, uh, which many people may be familiar with is, is the close overlapper. And all this does is it's built to uh, enable you to study lists or sequential bits of information. And so that's what I did to set up this card. And you can see here how the first question will be, what's the first advantage? What's the second advantage and so on. And so that's really, really good for memorizing lists or ordered lists of information. The second thing you'll see in this deck that I, I leveraged, just another add on. If I scroll down to get to it quickly um, to my note types, I used image occlusion types. Now, if we preview what this looks like, uh, you'll see there's uh, S3 storage classes. Uh, so there's different like types of ways of storage information and they come at different prices, different um, percentages of availability. I mean, it's not important, but you get the idea that there's this big picture of information and you need to remember the differences between them. Well, it's perfect for an image occlusion where you can hide the information, challenge yourself and then reveal it on an image. So that's really good for like grids of information or images where there's some text. It can help visual learners, definitely. So those are the two things that I use to help me create those 439 cards. And then I set about just studying Anki, you know, 15 minutes before I go to sleep. Anytime I had, a, you know, 10 to 15 minutes just to review, it was I can just do that in my downtime, not too strenuous and I'm memorizing a lot of the key information that will help me pass my exam. So after you've performed revision and trying to memorize a lot of the key information in the lead up to the exam, the best thing to do is take practice exams, right? You know, live the true exam experience and then learn from your mistakes and where you went wrong. Now I performed uh, a practice exam on a website such as WizLabs and it was really good at breaking down a report for me in terms of what topics I struggled with more than others. And I could then review the questions, uh, understand where I went wrong. And generally it would boil down to two things for the exam. There's either a poor understanding. So I didn't understand the concept well enough and perhaps my notes weren't clear enough based on my faulty understanding. So the solution to fix that is reread the documentation, update your notes, get a better understanding. Again, the second thing where I'd get questions wrong is just more down to poor memorization. I hadn't spent enough time uh, reviewing my flashcards or didn't have flashcards um, for bits of information. Like for example, I couldn't remember the six advantages of cloud computing. So the solution is memorize it, right? But these failures and then tackling, fixing those failures is where using Rome Research and Anki combined became challenging for me. And the first reason is what I term the Rome Anki disconnect. And what I mean by disconnect is that these are two separate applications and it separates your notes and your flashcards. They're two mutually exclusive things. And when trying to tackle the problem of poor understanding, as we said, the solution is to review the content that you need to know. And generally you might need to update your notes. So let me use an example, right? Where I'm going into my notes and it says the cash time or time to live. Let's say I've now learned it's changed to 24 hours. Okay, so I've updated my understanding, changed some information in my notes. I now need to go into Anki and update the relevant flashcards that relate to this updated knowledge. And because there's this disconnect, I go into my deck of 439 cards and I'm like, which cards do I need to update? 
There's no way of me easily identifying that. Okay, maybe if I spent a lot of time up front when creating these flashcards with tags for the topic, the themes, there's no, there's no other way I can filter down to know which ones to update. And so this disconnect creates duplication of effort, but also leaves a lot of room for error in terms of stale or incorrect knowledge being left there. And so you could be continuing to memorize the wrong information. I'll come on to now, how, did we, how do I think you can solve this challenge with Remnote? Well, Remnote by definition solves this problem because there is no disconnect between your notes and your flashcards because they are inherently the same thing should you want them to be. Um, if you're not familiar, Remnote is just like Rome, but it has a flashcard manager built in. And so if you take a look here on some small example notes I had here, so what is cloud computing? By putting this colon colon in, I've got a note on, okay, cloud computing is renting someone else's computer with various services. So that looks like notes, right, from your course. Um, but it is also by having put those two colons in a flashcard. And I can review it down here and you'll see what it looks like. And so if later on I go to update my notes because I realize that's not the definition of cloud computing and it's a uh, rent AWS's computers, it's not the definition, but let's say that was the new definition. My note is updated, but in the same time, because they're the same thing, my flashcard is updated. There's no disconnect. And so your own note, wow, that's really cool. It's removed the duplication of effort. It's removed the risk of disparate information. Okay, moving back to uh, the practice exams, the second problem that I mentioned was due to poor memorization. Now, and when we were reviewing our exams, I could look through what questions I got wrong. And some of them, as I said, would be due to poor memorization. I couldn't remember what the six advantages of cloud computing were. That's not a problem with my notes. It's a problem with my memory. I haven't reviewed Anki enough. Okay, the solution is I've got less time. Let's focus my Anki flashcard reviews on the areas of weakness in my knowledge. Okay, let's load up Anki. I go to study. Okay, but how do I study that specific information? It comes back to the point that I made earlier that unless you spend some crazy amount of time doing detailed tagging, then there's no way for me to specifically study flashcards for the billing and pricing or for a topic of anything related to edge locations. Again, that's another challenge is if you're doing this one day before the exam, you've not got much time. You don't want to spend your time studying all 439 cards where 80% of that you're really solid on. It's that 20% you want to learn. You can't filter down to it. Whereas Remnote, again, steps in here and I think solves this challenge perfectly. So come back to my short exemplary notes that I put here. And I actually made a, a separate page or folder for incorrect exam questions that I got wrong. And so, whereas in Anki, this, these are notes amongst 400 of others. I can specifically go to this page, press practice, and practice all of them, even if they're not scheduled yet. So it's like a cram function, which Anki does have, but again, it doesn't allow me to focus in on these specific notes. And I can go in and study them, right? Fantastic. So based on this first attempt at studying for an exam using these three different applications, I think I've decided that Remnote is the best for studying for an exam. Just that ability to have notes and flashcards inherently be the same thing if you want them is so, so powerful. Alongside having the power of networked note taking like Rome, you know, using the backlinks. So for now, Remnote is king, but more than anything, I'm just excited to see all these technologies evolve. They're constantly being iterated upon and developing, and I don't think any of them will stand still. So I'm excited to see what comes in the future, and I'll be sure to make videos on any significant changes in the future. So stick around, and I'll see you in the next one.